I've touched on scripts before, but now it's time to really go in depth with the script window and the code editor window. To create a new script, you can click on the resource menu drop down and then click create script, which is shift control C, or you can right click on the scripts resource folder in your resource tree and click create script. Once you do, you'll get a window that's similar to the code editor window. As with all resources, the first thing you'll want to do is name your script. Once again, you can use a prefix like SCR or just SC underscore or whatever you want to use. You might not even end up using a prefix. I'll just call mine SC underscore example. Now I've mentioned before that a script is sort of like a small snippet of code. It could be really any length, but usually the purpose of a script is to have some sort of code that can be recycled or create some sort of function that can be called upon by another piece of code. Before I talk about how to call upon a script, let's just look at the script window in general. This should also apply to the code editor window. With one exception, instead of a field for naming your script, the code editor window will have radio buttons for self and other and so on, shown here. But the bulk of the window is the same. The first icon on the toolbar will just close this window and save any changes you've made. The next section is load, save, and print. This will load a previously saved script, save a script so you can load it later, or print your script if that's something you want to do. The next section deals with undo and redo, then you have cut, copy, and paste, then we get into icons that are more specific. I'll skip the magnifying glass for now because we don't have any text to search yet. The next two icons will check your script for syntax errors and give you the option to autocomplete any built-in functions or variables or constants or whatever. I'm going to type in a few things now to show you what I'm talking about. Let's say I just type in random letters. Already we can see that line 1 has turned red. This means that there's some sort of syntax error, meaning GameMaker doesn't understand what you've written. This will also be denoted at the bottom. The info bar will give you an error and it tells you which line and which position the error will occur. You may also notice a sort of pink colored box next to the number 1. This means that this line was recently edited. If we close and save this window and open it back up, the pink box will disappear because this line was not edited this time we opened it. It was edited last time and already saved. So the pink box denotes any changes you've made since you last opened this script. Now if we turn off the button for check syntax, you'll notice that the red error goes away and the information in the information bar at the bottom also goes away. I would suggest leaving it on. It's not only a great tool for beginners, but it's a great tool for intermediate and advanced users. Let me just erase this. Now let me show you what autocomplete does. Let's say we're going to type out some sort of function for GameMaker. Let's do room restart. So as you can see, before I finish writing, I get a drop down menu of possible completions for this code. I also have the option to resize this window. So right now I can type the rest of room restart or I can select it from the list just by clicking on it. In this case, it is a function, so I still have to put in the parentheses myself. Let's delete some of this function so we get the drop down menu again. And now let's turn off the autocomplete button. Now you can see that the window's gone away. GameMaker will not autocomplete for us. Once again though, autocomplete is a great tool for beginner through advanced users. I suggest leaving on the syntax error checker and the autocomplete toggle. At the very bottom of the window you'll find some more information. The first section deals with the position of your cursor. It tells you which line you're on by the maximum lines. So the first number is the line your cursor is on, slash the total number of lines that you have in your code. Then there's a colon, and you have a number that represents the character position of your cursor. As you can see, if I move my cursor around, those numbers will change. The next section deals with insert and overwrite. Typically you want overwrite off. You'd want to use insert. As you can see, it's denoted by INS. This means that any character I type into my code window will be inserted in between the two characters where the cursor rests. If I press the insert key on my keyboard, it changes it to overwrite, and now you can see the cursor, instead of being a line, is now highlighting the character it sits on. If I were to type something now, that character would be overwritten. You probably don't want that, so just keep it on insert. 
The next section just tells you whether or not you've modified this code since you last opened the window. It'll be blank if it isn't modified, and it should say modified if there's some sort of pink box and a pink highlighted line number. The last section just tells you the points, which is the size of your font. To change the size of your font, you can use F7 and F8. Of course, there are more keyboard shortcuts. If for some reason you don't like that GameMaker uses colors to denote certain types of code, like functions or variables, the F10 key will toggle colored code. Most of the other keyboard shortcuts should function much like keyboard shortcuts in some sort of document editor, like a Word or WordPad or Notepad. If you're familiar with those, you should have no problem understanding Backspace and Control Z and Control C and V and all those kind of shortcuts. Before I forget, the magnifying glass on the toolbar allows you to search through the code in this code block. If you click on it, or use Control F, you get a panel on the right side of your code window. There are two sections, Find and Replace. In the Find section, you can just type in whatever you're looking for, like this. GameMaker will go through all of the code in this code window, and if it finds the text that you've typed into this field, it'll highlight it in yellow. You can also set whether or not you want it to be case sensitive. You can also set whether or not you want it to be the whole word. If you check mark whole word only, GameMaker will only search for a word or a group of words that are bookended by two spaces. That would be classified as a whole word only. Then you can use the four buttons below to cycle through each instance of the word or phrase you're trying to find. You can go previous and next, and you can go first and last. It's a great way to find something really quickly if you have some sort of large code you're looking through. But the true strength is using replace. Let's say we had to rename something. It would probably be a pain to go through your code manually and find each instance and then try to rename it yourself. Instead, you can just type in the word that you want to change in the find text field and then type in the word you want it to be replaced with in the replace text field. Once you typed in this new word you want to use to replace the old word, you have five buttons to choose from. The previous button will change the previous instance of the word you're looking for. That means the previous instance according to where your cursor currently lies. You can do the same with the next button, but that goes down your code. Previous goes up your code. First, we'll jump to the first instance of the word you're looking for and replace that one. And last, we'll jump to the last instance of the word you're looking for and replace that one. It's a little confusing to go through all of that, and sometimes you just want to hit replace all. That one's nice and easy. It just replaces all instances of the word you're looking for with the word you've typed into the replace text field. Just be careful when using this because the word you're looking for might be kind of generic and you may not want to replace all of them. That's why you would use previous next first and last. So now you can hit control F or click on the magnifying glass again to close the find window.